on an all-new Dr. Phil. My daughter is living with her father and his pregnant wife. His new wife. I've always wanted a baby. Is the same age as his daughter. You say you're not number one in his life. She is. I feel like I'm not as important. My relationship with Tara is toxic. Yelling in each other's faces. Beating on each other's bedroom doors. And his daughter is caught in the middle. I have nobody else. She's got no mother. She's got nobody. She has a mother sitting right next to her, Jim. She has nobody to talk to. Why don't you let Dr. Phil talk? He'll tell me when to shut up. Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Christina, who emailed me desperate to help her 21-year-old daughter, Tara, who she says is living in a toxic situation with what she calls her narcissistic ex-husband, Jim, and his new wife, who just happens to be the same age as their daughter. But Jim says Christina has no right to criticize because she walked out on Tara when she was 13. Here's what's happened so far. My ex-husband, Jim, is the granddaddy of all narcissists. I left him because of the emotional neglect, sexual neglect. I do not regret leaving Jim, but I never intended to leave my daughter with him permanently. Jim says he is the only one who has ever been there for his daughter. That is Christina who abandoned the family and just went MIA. It always seemed like she was too busy. It felt like she threw the talent on being a mom and a wife. My ex-husband has been a horrible example for my daughter. If I'm so bad, why would you leave your child with somebody that's not a good dad? Christina's been missing in action. I have been there no. the whole time. You're only there when she's in a good mood. I'm there all the time, okay? If he's so bad, what the hell are you doing leaving your daughter with him? I regret that. Dr. Um, Phil, that is the one thing haunted me. You gotta be there for her still, no matter what. I am there for her. I, I mean, a little girl needs like, her mother. You forget all the it's good stuff your, I do. It's, it's at your all convenience, the stuff okay? That I, I do. live it. Well, I let me be real clear it. about one thing. I'm not even almost here to try to fix this. <laughs> Tara says she cannot understand why her mother abandoned her and feels nothing but anger and resentment towards her. Once she left, I felt empty and alone and really confused. I definitely have felt more anxious and overwhelmed. I feel mad. I have anger in me that I can't let go of. I feel like my heart's beating out of my chest. Feeling alone and abandoned amplifies whatever these problems are that I'm dealing with. When you say you feel your heart pounding in your chest, what do you say to yourself in your head? Like, you're stupid, you suck, you're gonna fail. Maybe if you were a better child, she wouldn't have left. That's how I feel a lot of times. Jim has allowed my daughter to do exotic dancing and provocative webcam videos from her bedroom. If she's gonna try to make money without being around a lot of people, I thought the webcamming worked. I'm really not proud of it. It's not something that I necessarily wanted to do, but basically just like dancing at home. I need you to tell me, dad to dad, what you say to yourself when you know that your precious child is down the hall on a webcam, taking her clothes off and doing things for money. I'm not there, I'm at work. Did somebody write stupid on my forehead? To make matters more complicated, Jim recently married Tara's high school friend, who's now 20 weeks pregnant. Tara is currently living with her father and his pregnant wife, Kelsey, who happens to be the same age as her. Kelsey was 19 when I started dating her. Kelsey actually pursued me. I was single and free. You know, we hung out and we're together. The age difference 
should be illegal. It would be the same difference as me being with a 12-year-old boy. Somebody might think I have a problem now, but that's their problem. The living conditions that Tara is in are absolutely deplorable. We all have our own demons. We all have our own struggles. I have a message on my phone stating that Kelsey had climbed out the window and Tara had to jump in front of the car to stop her. It's been crazy here today. She's trying to climb out the window and drive down. There's some competition between Kelsey and Tara because Tara pays rent. I don't make enough money to support us all. Yeah, but you make enough to just support her. The relationship he's in is an unhealthy one, and I don't want my daughter exposed to it. Kelsey moved in knowing the situation with Tara, but probably not realizing how bad it was. It's hard to balance. Jim's 22-year-old pregnant wife, Kelsey, says she is frightened to raise her baby with Jim in their current environment. She understands that Tara might have social anxiety, but she thinks Tara's behavioral issues stem from being a spoiled only child. Take a look. I was 19, moving in with a 55-year-old, so I could see how some people would think it was weird, but I didn't really think it was that weird. <laughs> When we first got married, things were great, but over the course of the relationship, there's been a lot of stress. It's mostly because of the tension that Tara creates in the household. My relationship with Tara is toxic because she's a pretty negative person to be around. We used to just explode and then walk away, but now it's become more intense. We're yelling in each other's faces. We're beating on each other's bedroom doors. Jim and I had a big argument one night, and he pretty much told me that Tara's problems were more important than mine. The fact that Jim always defends Tara is the biggest problem that we have in our relationship and in the house. I think Tara has mental issues, but I think she likes to use her mental issues as a cover-up to get attention. Jim puts Tara on a pedestal. And I feel like he doesn't treat me that way, so it makes me feel like the least important woman in his life. The night before I found out I was pregnant, I wanted to leave him because of the situation. And then I found out I was pregnant, so I felt like I couldn't leave. And now I feel like I should leave him because the baby shouldn't live in that kind of environment. Well, thanks for being here. Thank uh, you. You were going to end this relationship the day before you found out you were pregnant. Right. And I, I was a little confused. Y you say you stayed because of the baby, but yet you want to leave because of the baby. I felt like it was a very toxic situation, and it just felt like it was never ending. Um, so I decided to leave, and then finding out I was pregnant, I'm thinking, well, I can't raise a baby on my own. I don't want the baby to feel like he's grown up in a broken home or anything. So that's mm -hmm. part of the reason why I stayed. I've always wanted a baby. But you are going to have to make a decision whether you want to raise the baby in this environment if it doesn't change. Right. I know that. Yeah, okay. You say you're not number one in his life. She is. I feel like my needs are pushed behind and I'm not as important. So exactly how I felt when I was married to him, Dr. Phil. I have nobody else. That's all I had. She's got no mother. She's got nobody. So she I has a mother up. sitting right next to her, you, Jim. Right you now, don't pick I the do, phone and up so at 3 in the morning. I sit there and talk to her all night, which cuts into our marriage. Not going there. And again. I don't like it. Stop. Okay? I don't Stop. like it. But who's she going to go to? She has nobody to talk to. You, you don't Phil, pick the please. phone up like I do. Narcissist I'm there. conversation oh, order. Well, please, Dr. I'm there 24-7, and Tara will tell you that. You think she's a worthless bitch and you've thrown her under the bus. I don't think that. Well, it's what you're doing every time no, you open your you mouth. You, it... And later. A war that I fight every day and it's hard for me to expect anyone else to understand it. Do you think I understand it? I hope so. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. Stand up. I believe my son is possessed when exorcism is necessary. A violent 12-year-old. He was screaming, so I busted his butt. And then dropped him in the gravel.
No, sir. A desperate father. He threatens to burn down the house. You have no respect. He is terrified. It looks like bullying because... Of because it is. You get in his face and say, Do you see how this works? That's Monday. What's the difference between me and her? We're like the same f***ing age. She's my wife. What did she do that's so great to get a f***ing husband and get married? She freaks out too and has her own f***ing. She doesn't even f***ing communicate ever or talk. I was nice to my first wife. You know why she's not? I was nice to the long off until I couldn't be there both. <laughs> so I'm mean to her. Is that what you're saying? Oh, me. I mean, I'm not mean to her. I just don't like fake which seems to be the trend here. All right, let me see. I gotta go. Why don't you let Dr. Phil talk? He can help he'll, us. He'll tell me when to shut up. Do you feel welcome with these two? I mean, I, I know what Kelsey's saying, and I respect that. Like I said, I have nobody else, so this is when I get where I'm like, well, fine, then I'll just leave, and y'all have your little perfect happy life. She means leave, like, taking herself out of the picture all the way. You know, I've who wants to bury their kid? I've said that before for help, honestly, only because I don't know what else to do. I, I don't know what to do, and a lot of times I just want to run away. Like, I want them to be happy. I want them to have a happy life. You know, if it means the, I'm not a happy person in general, so. And I, I want what? her to come stay with me if she wants or whatever would be healthy for Tara. I'm there. If, if she needs a place to go, I'm there. I don't why want do her you, to feel like uh, she has nowhere uh, to go. Why, why do you think you go into these rages? I, I don't know how to, else to express it. I get, like, where I just can't even... I really just don't even know what else to do with myself when I get like that. It's not for attention. It's just because I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. It's okay. all night. It could be 3 in the morning. She could be pacing around the carport, running around, going, throwing things, freaking out. It's like, but, you know, I'll sit there. I can't help her, obviously. I don't know what to do, but I've listened for years. I sit there and try to calm her down. I'll text her mother. And say, can you help Tara? I'll text her mo her mother, Nana, Tara's Nana. I'll text her. Can somebody so Tara knows somebody's there to love her besides me? And it's not. It doesn't happen. Nobody's there uh, when, well, when she needs them. Okay. Can we just agree on one thing? That you think she's a worthless bitch, and you've thrown her under the bus. And that way, you don't need to do that anymore. I don't think that. Well, it's what you're doing every time no, you open what your you mouth. Put, you, if, <laughs> So if you put it on, if you put it on the camera of what happened years ago, that's not who I am now. But you're bringing it up, so I'm going to back myself up. That's not what it is. Well, I didn't say she's a worthless. Every kid. time I'm you actually open, proud of her. For every time you open a, your going mouth, to college. Every time you open your mouth, you you dog on her and say she's not there, she's never been there, she abandoned right, her, right. she doesn't answer the phone, et cetera, et cetera. I got it. Gotcha. I got it. Okay. So we'll just cons right. okay. I got that. I got that. That's your opinion. Well, that's what... I got it. You don't need to tell me again. I got it. So we can talk about other things, because I got that that's your opinion. Good. That you've been there and she hasn't. Got it. Sorry, Good. it's not my fault. No, no, no. Move on, then. No, it isn't. <laughs> Up next, Jim says he's torn between his wife and his daughter. So what's he going to do? I guess he'll tell us next, because we've taken this off the table. We can move on to something else. And I'm really interested in focusing on Tara, because she feels Dang. like she has no options. I think she has a whole world of options ahead of her. And we're going to get to those. We'll be right back. Anger is a big part of it, and I do have the freak out. I don't see the anger. I just wonder what you're hurting about so badly. And later, a young woman's harrowing escape from an intruder. He came through the door yelling at me. He grabbed a cell phone cord, tied it around my neck. The cord broke and I ran out. Tuesday on an all new Dr. Phil. The shocking true story. Your mother kept you in a wheelchair. She kept you on a feeding tube. She said I had muscular dystrophy. She had you diagnosed with asthma, hypoventilation, epilepsy, leukemia. You know now she was making all of that up. 
She told me if I was to contact anybody and tell them, she would take a hammer to my fingers. Victim. Did she ever catch you walking? A couple times. She started hitting me with a coat hanger. You ran away once. She changed you up. She had taken handcuffs and a dog leash and tied me to the bed. And perpetrator. You had a boyfriend. Did you ask him, will you kill my mother for me? Deputies discovered the body of Lady Blanchard early this morning. A twisted tale of a daughter. I heard her scream for me a couple times. Pushed to the edge. I wish I wouldn't have done any of that. A daytime exclusive. That's Tuesday. I'm just sitting here by myself. No one's talking to me. And they're in there. I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't really care. But it's like, okay, so she can have a freak out and basically do whatever she wants. So she has someone there for her, my dad. And they can just sit there and talk and, you know, make sure she's okay. Well... I'm just sitting here and like I feel like I have no one and I'm miserable and I'm just like trying to be quiet and stay calm and stuff but I don't know it's this happens a lot so here we are. Well Tara says that she feels like she can't function in the real world she says she's angry because her mom left when she was only 13. Christina says she just really couldn't handle her narcissistic husband Jim. I think we've established that they're not each other's biggest fans. Uh, she blames his bad parenting on Tara's problems. And Jim says his 20-year-old pregnant wife, Kelsey, uh, are now jeopardizing Tara's well-being. You feel like you don't really have any options, right? Yes. Um, yeah. And you haven't prepared yourself a lot for life. and these two parents didn't prepare you a lot for life. They allowed you to um, let your dysfunction take over and so you didn't complete your education, you don't have skill sets and all to be competitive in the in the real world. And look, I, I can't render you a diagnosis here, that would be unprofessional of me to, to do that. What I can tell you is what would be on my short list of considerations, uh, and I would have a short list of considerations. And I want to tell you that I, I do think that anger um, is your default emotion. It's, I agree. It, it's what you go to because it's the safest emotion. Because see, if, if, if you go to anger, then you're less likely to be hurt. Mm -hmm. because you've already started a fight right so it's not like you went and said hey listen I really like you and I want you to want me and accept me and then if you get rejected that's painful but if you go in and say I don't want you to want me because I don't like you and I'm gonna yell at you and scream at you then it doesn't hurt because you never find out whether they would have let you stay anger is a big part of it and I do have the freak outs and that happens a lot <laughs> like almost every day but then I go through like a ton of different emotions throughout the day yeah. sad you know all yeah. kinds of different stuff well, happens that's because anger is just the outward manifestation of hurt fear or frustration I mean, when you, let's think about this. All of y'all think about this. Next time you're at the grocery store and you're going, you're checking out, and and the clerk is being really rude and and short, <laughs> instead of saying, "What a jerk," and just say to yourself, "Man, I wonder what she's hurting about, or frustrated about, or afraid of." Yeah. If you see that, if you look past the anger and see what's behind it you'll have a very different interaction. If you just say that about him or her that's checking you out, you'll, you'll have a very different. And so when you have all of these outbursts, I, I don't see the anger. I just wonder what you're hurting about so badly. Me too. I tried to do that, and that was yet another place where I couldn't handle it. It isn't that you couldn't handle it, you didn't handle it. This is what happens all the time, no matter what the situation is. When I hear you saying that you're such a bad person and talking so negatively to yourself, 
I just wonder what you're so afraid of. Everything. Life in general. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you know, you're afraid of failing, so you just you quit before you start. Yeah. You just decide, I'm a failure, so why try? Right. Why try? I, I, I don't want to face failure, so I'll just decide I'm a failure before I start. And it proves itself again and again, because even, like, you know, if I've tried a job recently, just a, a little nursery in town, and I tried doing that, and it wasn't like, I'm going to fail, I'm not going to do this. I tried to do that, and that was yet another thing, another place where I couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So it happens no matter what I do, no matter where I go. Oh. It isn't that you couldn't handle it, you didn't handle it. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have coping skills right now for some of the things you're experiencing. You do have some social anxiety. Yeah, really bad. And when anxiety starts, what's the first cue for you? How do you know it's coming? Do you get butterflies in your stomach? Do your ears get hot? Do you start getting sweaty palms? What's the first cue? Usually I just like shake, can't breathe, my brain starts going. What's the very first thing? <sighs> it's always different. No, it's not. There's a first thing. I don't know. I just, I, like, I feel like I can't. I'm already feeling like that now, and I don't... Well, what is it you're feeling? Afraid. But what, what are you feeling physically? Nervous, I know what it is. anxious. I know what the... It's a physical symptom. I know what it is. It, it's shaking. You, you started to shake. Oftentimes, I, I can't even put it into words, what I'm yeah, feeling. It's yeah. very hard for me but to But physically, you started to shake. Yeah. Your hands started to shake. I'm very nervous. And you started to shake here. Yeah. And also, that's the first sign. And, yeah. and But I tell you, that, that sign's going to become our friend. It's not just because I'm here on it. You no, know, I know. It's just this is what happens all yeah. the time, no matter what the situation is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to become our friend. Because that shaking that is the, the, first, the first link in the chain to the meltdown. Yeah. We're going to make that the first link in the chain to a coping sequence. Because you're going to learn very soon. You're going to say, here's what Dr. Phil was talking about. And this can either cue me to meltdown or it can cue me into a coping sequence that I've learned. And so when that happens, I'm going to go into this coping sequence and I'm going to observe myself cope and realize, holy I can do it. <laughs> I can do nice. that. Wow. I, I watched myself do that. I didn't freak. I watched myself do it. It won't be a success only journey, and that's okay. If you could do it five out of ten times, that would be great right now, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then if you could do it seven out of ten, then ten out of ten. Yeah. And, and here's the big thing you don't have to do it alone. See, there's two things about coming here. You said it's hard to get on. It's true. But there's two things about coming here. It's when you come here, this experience is not the end of our relationship. It's the beginning. That's and awesome. part two is I know a lot of really good people with really good resources, and you're about to meet one of them. Coming up, Tara says she wants to be normal and have a life that she's proud of. We're going to take the first step down that trail when we come back. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Stand up! I believe my son is possessed. He's getting spanked and then dropped in the gravel. No, sir. You get in his face and say, do you see how this works? That's Monday. Hi, Dr. Phil. So now I just feel really alone and bored. It's like as much as I want to be around people and have that interaction, I really feel like I don't even know how anymore. I would love to go have some friends and go do something fun today or, you know, go to a job and work, but just kind of like remove myself from everything. I do feel hopeful and I'm looking forward to meeting you because I know that if anybody can help me get through this, pretty sure it's you. So thank you for giving me some hope. Well, Christina emailed us saying her daughter Tara doesn't know how to deal with adversity and she blames her ex-husband Jim for not doing some of the things that might have prepared her. Uh, 
she blames herself as well because she knows she could have done more than she's done. Um, and so you're here now, and you're glad you're here, right? Yeah. Uh, do you feel worthy of all this attention? No. Yeah. Why do you think I ask you that? Um, because you think I am. Yeah. And I know you don't think so. Yeah. I know you don't think so, and so that makes you nervous, right? Because you got all this attention. You wanted to be here. You wanted to meet me, right? And yeah. all that. But then when I'm all focused on you, you're thinking, you know, come on, move on. You know? <laughs> I mean, you're spending too much time on me, right? No, uh, I mean, I really appreciate it, obviously. It's just, like I said, this is a very difficult thing. Um, it, I've spent a lot of time, like, it's in my own head. It's a war that I fight every day, and it's hard for me to expect anyone else to understand it when... I don't even understand it that well myself. Do you think I understand it? I hope so. <laughs> I think so. That's why I'm here. My brain's gonna tell me that you don't and it's gonna fight it the whole way, but I know mm. you do, that's why I'm here. Well, I asked you about your internal dialogue. I told you how much you tell yourself that. Yeah. I explained your anger, your social anxiety. And you're living in a highly toxic situation. And, you know, you, your dad down here, he, he said uh, he's made some stupid mistakes along the way. And he's, he, he makes some every day because he's in a pattern. But he's doing the best he knows how. Yeah. That's all he can do. He's just doing the best he knows how. I know that. Uh, hell, he's there. Yeah. And he's here. Yeah. You got to give him credit. He came here. Of he, he's here. Course, he's doing the best he can. Um, and I, I hear you say that. You know, you, you really love your mother and you recognize that she's trying. Yes, and I know that she wants to be there. A lot of people just don't know how. So everybody's here. Yep. Do you have a story only I can help solve? Go to drphil.com and click be on the show or text Phil to 88500. And there's somebody else I've added here. This is Miles Adcox. Hi. Okay. Uh, he's the owner and the CEO of Onsite. Onsite is the worldwide leader in intensive workshops. And by that, I mean they deal in a very customized way with putting together intensive treatment for people that have been through trauma, people that have lived with trauma. And they specialize in them. And I always like to describe what you guys do so well is hit the reset button. I couldn't agree more. Tara, based on your circumstances, what makes sense to me is that you struggle trusting people mm -hmm. or trusting circumstance. What doesn't make sense and what surprises me is based on your circumstances, you still run towards hope. You're a bright, intuitive, empathetic young woman. And here's the thing we get to do today is you've been running towards hope and you've been hitting an obstacle. You've been running towards hope and you've been hitting an obstacle. Today, just for a moment, we're taking that obstacle down. Because today, somebody you can trust is Dr. Phil.
and me and my team, and we're going to take good care of you. Thank you. They're going to focus on you and get you to the point that you can look in the mirror and like who you see. Nice. Okay. And then we're going to start making a transition program to get you into a position in life where you can stand on your own two feet, be self-sustaining, and be proud of who you are and what you do. And that's my commitment to you. That's Miles and, and his team's commitment to you. You deserve it. Yeah. It's your time. Nice. It's your turn. It's no accident that you're here today. I really appreciate that. I mean, I'm really scared. That was one of my fears of coming here because as much as I'm scared of things staying the same, I'm afraid of change too, but that's why I'm here because I'm hopeful and I do trust you and I know you've helped a lot of people. So I, I'm very thankful for this opportunity. Well, tell me that you're gonna run towards this and you're gonna do it. Yes, I will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next, she survived a terrifying experience at the hands of an ex-boyfriend. We'll meet her next. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. You know, sadly, one in three women have been victims of some form of physical violence by an intimate partner. Now, that staggering statistic comes from the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. My next guest, Nikki, was one of those women. When she tried to end a relationship with a boyfriend, Nikki says he violently attacked her and said she felt as if she could die. Here's Nikki's story. I was in a relationship for about two and a half years. I often feared for my life. In the beginning of our relationship, my ex-boyfriend was very sweet and he became very possessive. March of 2017, my ex came into the house. And he came through the door yelling at me. I followed him into my room. He stood here at the dresser and he grabbed a cell phone cord, threw me down here on the ground and he tied it around my neck. The cord broke. And through the front door to the neighbor's house across the street. I was in shock. I got a restraining order against my ex-boyfriend. I want to start focusing on myself again. Looking in the mirror reminds me of what I've been through. Because the stress of my relationship, I'm seeing those signs in my skin. I would love to find a way to improve my skin and erase my past. Well, Robin is joining me because she is so passionate about the issue of domestic violence. So, welcome, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, before we meet Nikki, Robin, you started a nonprofit foundation with the sole purpose of helping victims of domestic violence. Tell us about it. Four years ago, I launched When Georgia Smiled. We create educational programs that are being used in schools across the country. We have also created an app voted on Capitol Hill as one of the two top apps best at helping raise the awareness of domestic violence and sexual assault. Our goal at When Georgia Smiled is to do what we can to help all women, children, and men who are suffering from domestic violence and sexual assault to live happy and joy-filled lives free of abuse. And today, we're supporting Nikki because she is a survivor. Now, as Nikki works to rebuild her life and confidence, we brought her in early, much earlier than we normally do, so we could give her, we, you know, we just wanted to treat her special. We wanted to give her VIP treatment because we just felt like she deserved it. Take a look. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Dr. Phil and Robin wants to give you a surprise makeover, so we pulled all these beautiful dresses just for you. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Let's get you trying some things on. Okay. So I was thinking 
looking, we would give you a little bit of more brown, a little bit of highlights around the front. How does that sound? Sounds really good. Okay, let's get started. So come on out, Nikki. Okay, and uh, you walked that with some confidence. I like that. <laughs> I have that smile on your face. Thank you. All right, Nikki, thank you for being here. I'm so glad for you to meet Robin. First of all, I have to say, you look beautiful. Thank you. And I love that smile and that bounce when you came out. So how are you feeling? I feel amazing. I haven't felt this beautiful in a really long time. Nikki, you say you were attacked by an ex-boyfriend uh, about a year ago. And before that day, did you see signs of violence in him or just come out of the blue? No, there were definite signs of violence prior to that incident. In June of, of 2015 was the first time he hit me and it, our relationship continued to be abusive throughout the duration. And every time he would say he was sorry and I thought he would change. Right. And you say on March 4th, he attacked you with a phone cord. Then on the 12th, you say he choked you with both hands. Fortunately, you were able to escape both times. Uh, what eventually happened to him? Um, in March, uh, March 12th of this year, I filed a restraining order. Um, he was prosecuted in September of this year. He pled guilty to battery, and he was sentenced to 30 days in the county jail. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the bottom line is you got out. And we also have resources for victims of domestic violence. And as Robin mentioned earlier, this app was voted as one of the top two uh, on Capitol Hill. It's gotten huge, huge response in the community that fights against domestic violence. And we want to be careful what we say about the Aspire app first. It will show up as just any other app on your phone. And we have Aspire there, and it looks like it feeds to a news service. If your abuser takes your phone, he or she would look at it and say, well, what is this? Because they, of course, want to know everything. They click on that. They go then to the options of all of the news pages out there. You see the actual news page, as we did here with Daily Mail, and they are current. And then you'll see the top bar across the top. We call that the go button. You tap that three times, it, it takes you inside the Aspire app. And that's where you get all of the services that we offer. The most important one, of course, is it's taking you to connect with your contacts that you have chosen to instantly send a message to. That message can be, this is the time we talked about, come now. You can also have a call 911. It has a GPS tracking device on it in case your abuser takes you away from your normal location. You can press it once you're there and show them where your location is, of course. And it has a function that allows you to immediately call from the location. It doesn't make a noise to alert your abuser as to what is happening. Yeah. And it has different features and tells you in your area where there's a shelter, all the helplines, and it's very, very extensive. So these contacts you're talking about, you pre-program these mm -hmm. when you're in safety. You pre-program it where it might be your mother, your neighbor, coworker, uh, a coworker, or something where when you hit that tap, 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 mm -hmm. it sends a message instantly mm -hmm. to those people, I'm in trouble. And this app has saved lives. Oh, yes. And we're partnering with Verizon here. Uh, they've donated $50,000 for the redesign and update of the app, so we thank them very much. This is an exciting thing. <laughs> Seriously, congratulations on having the vision to do this. Oh, I'm thank proud you. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. So proud yeah. of it. Nikki, I want to wish you all the best as you continue to heal and move forward. I, really, I'm so proud of you for being here and for thank doing you. this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank all of my guests today. We'll see you next time.